So I'm Deirdre Murphy. I go by she, her. I am a painter and I am a visiting assistant professor at Lehigh and I oil paint and printmaking mainly. I did always want to be an artist. In fact, it was so neat. I was just thinking last night, like, oh, my parents had a really kind of eclectic taste in art and um, because we lived all over the world and, and like in their home, they kind of have rooms where like, oh, this is the Asian room and this is the European room. And I was introduced to art just through living in different countries. And then I always knew I wanted to be an artist from the get-go, but I didn't have the courage to pursue it until my sophomore, junior year in college. So I feel like I'm a lifelong student as an artist. It's incredibly challenging and I definitely kind of have that type A personality where I like to be challenged. But it also has this grounding property to it where even as difficult as it can be in studio sometimes, I still feel whole by actually being there showing up to do the work. I make pictures of places I want to go in my mind. <laughs> I've done work about bird migration and climate change for a long time, but now I'm into nests and nest architecture and color is really important to me and um, how the paint is put on and kind of bridging that gap between abstraction and realism. So I'm really trying to get into the nest structure so much so that they look abstract at times so that I feel like by getting lost in my own work, I can perhaps find a new way of making work and perhaps find out new things about who I am as an artist. So I'm in the process of getting lost, which is kind of scary, but necessary for growth. I came to Lehigh after 20 years at the University of Pennsylvania, and I was really attracted to Lehigh because of the smaller department. The fact there's a small number of faculty, and that with that smaller community, what I do as a painting instructor can have more impact, that I could have more of a voice and really be part of the students' growth through their four years, rather than you know only seeing students in drawing one or painting one or you know intro printmaking and things like that now at lehigh i really get to like be part of the student's journey and i really feel like i'm able to have more of an impact a positive impact on the department I think we women were making art all alongside our male counterparts, but we were also pregnant, you know, no birth control back then, right? So we were having to do a lot more of the domestic work. Yes, I think the women were making art back then, but you had to use a male name, right? In order to get your work shown and, and seen. So we won't know a lot of those women artists because they hid their names. And there was usually classism involved because if you, you know, had 13 children to feed and raise and had to do all the laundry by hand and go out there and work in the fields and everything. You didn't have any time at night to do your painting or drawing, right? You know, I don't know this for certain, but I would think that it had to be a certain class of women that were able to hire a wet nurse or hire a cook and a housekeeper and things like that that would give them, afford them the time to work with having to have children because I think most women really, it wasn't a choice whether you had children or not, you, you just had children. So I just went to New York and saw the Jennifer Packer exhibition of the Whitney. And she is an African-American woman from Philly. Went to Temple for uh, undergrad and then on to Yale for grad school and now lives in Manhattan. And she is just a dynamite painter giving voice to the black experience. So I think right now she's one of my faves. I don't only look at women artists for um, inspiration in studio. I, I kind of try and keep it gender free or gender neutral and just look at it from a formal point of view. I can't wait to see the Joan Mitchell show in Baltimore. She was an amazing abstract painter. When I think about it, like it would be interesting actually to look at my bookshelf to see if I have more women than men artists that I, I'm kind of drawn to as mentors. If you look up like the Gorilla Girls, they have like statistics for, you know, how many 
many women are, they look at like the number of nude paintings of women or nude sculptures of women depicted and it's like 89%. And then the number of women artists that are actually represented is like 14%. It is still very skewed, very, very skewed. And also to be a woman artist mother and a woman artist mother teacher is not looked upon so highly. Or if you are, you're not really to speak of your children. You bring your professional face forward and then your domestic life falls after. I mean, I was told as a young teacher when I had our firstborn, you know, I said, well, I'd like to keep my, my full-time stature, but I need to be able to take, you know, a year off while my baby's an infant or, you know, go back to like cut down to part-time that I'm, I'm nursing and, you know, this is really important that I'm with my infant for the first year of life that I would want to work part-time. And I was told to get a nanny if I wanted to stay that I needed to make those sacrifices. That there wasn't that understanding, like if I wanted to be a professional. It still holds true that male artists are um, more highly regarded um, in the, the gallery world. When you look at a man's resume, you're not gonna see those blips of pregnancy when you're not allowed to be around toxicity of the first year or two when you're nursing and you're not allowed to be around toxicity and you're also like trying to keep this new life alive. You're not gonna see that much of a blip. Things are shifting now for your generation, thankfully. Like paternity leave is a thing. Like for me, I didn't even get maternity leave. I had to pay for my own maternity leave because I was an adjunct for 20 20 years and so adjuncts that's a whole nother conversation but adjuncts are it's like the feudal lords and serfs and so I didn't get maternity leave there was no like Obama plan and I don't even think women on Obama plan get health care get maternity leave so I had to make all that stuff happen myself and be able to afford to like take time off of work and it was definitely sacrifices and hardships I'm really glad I did because that time with your baby is so important but then you know when you get back into the gallery world they're like whoa so what what's this gap? Why didn't you have a solo show every two year? And what happened here? And what happened there? And so I wound up actually losing a gallery because I decided to have a second child because I wasn't producing enough and I was pregnant. My production level fell off for obvious reasons. And so I actually lost my gallery. Don't give up. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard, but don't give up. Like just keep showing up to studio. Most important thing is just to keep making your work and believe in yourself. You know, one of the things that I found really helpful, you know, when you're in school, it's great. You have your colleagues, you have, you know, the students, you have your teachers, all these people that really do care about your well-being and your growth as an artist. But then when you get out of school, you know, it can be a little bit lonely and challenging to keep, you know, showing up to studio and making the work and getting the work in galleries and things. So I found it really helpful to have a crit group, and I still do to this day. I actually i am part of an all-women, it's called the Femme Collective, and there's six of us, and it's women in different stages of life. Some are mothers, some are not, some are grandmothers, some have, you know, teenagers like me. But the thing that we all share is that we're, we're women artists, and we get together and we critique each other's work. Sometimes we'll be like, hey, what are you reading? Or what, are you, what movies have you seen? Do you wanna to go to this art exhibit? I've become really close with these women artists that I met professionally, but now we really share this bond. So find a community where you feel supported and that you feel you belong and and then you know have them in studio and keep that critical dialogue going. But most importantly, just keep making work and don't give up.